Hey everybody, welcome to another video. We are going to start talking about polynomials and polynomial driven functions like rational functions for a very long time. And so in this video, I just want to refresh what a polynomial is and some of the vocabulary we'll be using as we go into the future stuff. So it's a very short video. There's not much to, um, to this except for kind of recapping what you should know about polynomials. And if you don't, that's okay. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, so we're going to talk about what polynomials are some of the verbiage that we use, what are not polynomials, and then how we really want to see them. So next few videos will unpack what all we, we do with polynomials, especially from the aspect of how do you graph them? Or better yet, maybe a picture of the polynomial in your head, like a sketch, so you can uh, interpret what it means and get into calculus, that's really important. So what polynomials are, and we're going to go with it. Polynomials are these kind of creatures in math where we have several terms, poly being this sort of uh, mini and, and nomial or nom, this, this, uh, this sort of name or term. And so what a polynomial is, is several terms. It doesn't have to be several, it can be just one term, but typically it's several terms that are combined with addition and subtraction. So you're gonna notice on the board right away that that looks really confusing. You go, that looks like a whole bunch of garbage. Yeah, I get it. But it's just one of the ways that we can show what a polynomial will look like eventually. So what polynomials are, are these, these math expressions, in this case, we have a function. So we have a function, we're talking about polynomial functions, these math expressions from here to here that are connected with addition or subtraction. You go, well, that all looks like addition. That's true, but if we had coefficients that are negative, we would write that as subtraction. So this is the way we structure a polynomial so we can kind of wrap up all the cases in one. So what does it mean? Firstly, I want you to notice that these a's have different subscripts and they match these exponents. So the exponents n and n minus one, n minus two, and then all the way down to you get to uh, a two, a one, and then no exponent above an x has no x at all uh, at the very end, which is a constant term. That's how we want to structure our, our polynomials. We want them in order. That's one of the notes that we have up there is that exponents need to be in descending order. So you want your biggest exponent first. It's pretty important because it does a few things for you. I'm gonna kind of spoiler alert here. Uh, there shouldn't be any spoilers in, in math. Like you should know what you're getting out of it. We want these in order for a number of reasons. Number one, our leading term, which is what this is, we'll talk about that in just a second. Our leading term tells us a tremendous amount about the polynomial and most importantly, what it looks like graphically. We are gonna get end behavior from our leading term. We're gonna get the degree, which gives us end behavior from our leading term. The degree also tells us how many zeros we have if we include complex numbers. Numbers. So it's pretty powerful. Also, we want our constant to be at the end. The reason why we want to do that is because if we have a constant, you can't just factor out an x. If you don't have a constant, you can, which is pretty cool. So it means it's automatically factorable if you don't have a constant. If you do have a constant, you're going to want to know what that is because if you can't factor this easily or use something like quadratic formula for degree five and higher polynomials, there is no such thing as a formula to give you zeros. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. Um, up to power four there is, but it's extremely difficult and so it takes a lot of time. And so we have something called the rational zeros theorem and you're going to want to know what your leading coefficient, that's the number in front of your leading term, and what your constant is because if you know those two things, I can teach you what the rational zeros are going to be. Um, if you don't know those two things, you have to search for them. It just, it just It's cumbersome. So those are some of the reasons why we want our polynomial in order by descending exponents. So this n, this n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down to 2, 1, and nothing at all. We want that to be descending. So n obviously is our largest one, n minus 1. And now you might be asking the question, well, wait a minute. Um, are, am I always going to have a polynomial where it's like x to the fifth and x to the fourth and x to the second? No, you're not. And that's why we have a coefficient in front of every one of these is because sometimes we can consider those coefficients to be zero. And then it takes that whole term and it wipes it out. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we structured this way is to make room for every possible polynomial. It looks confusing. They're honestly not all that bad, but that's what that means. And sometimes I've seen students just look at that and go, I'm never going to get this. Yeah, you will. It's, not, it's really not that bad. It's just telling you that Hey, you have a lot of terms. Yeah, they're going to be added and subtracted. We want them in order, so we want our biggest exponent first and then descending to our smallest. 
these coefficients, they're the numbers in front of our terms, they match up to our specific uh, our specific, specific exponent. So this would be the coefficient that matches up with this, this exponent, the coefficient here. Can some of your coefficients be zero? Yes, they can be zero, um, and that would annihilate these entire terms. So that means that you don't have to have an exponent on um, for every possible case below your largest power, which is also your degree. So that's what those are for. Now, a couple, a couple key words that we have. Uh, the first one you've heard me explain it, probably define it already. It's called a leading term. If you have this in order, then your leading term is going to be the term with the largest exponent. It should be your first term if you've done it in order, shouldn't it? I mean, it's got to be in order, right? You want the biggest one first, and the leading term is the term with the largest exponent. That's why it's in the front. Your leading term is a sub n x to the n, and those that right there, it's really the only um, coefficient that we don't want to be zero because you should start somewhere, and so this leading term is what they're talking about. They're saying, hey, you know what? It's gonna be the term with the largest power. That's what the leading term means. It should be the first one because you should be writing these polynomial functions in order. And we already talked about why it's really important. That's gonna give us end behavior. That's gonna give us the degree. It's gonna give us um, the number of maximum turning points. If you subtract one from the degree, it's gonna give us the number of zeros if you include complex numbers. There, there's a whole lot this gives us. And it's gonna be part of with our leading coefficient. That's the number in front of our leading term there, uh, not including the x. That's gonna give us the rational zeros theorem. So pretty important. The constant term should be last. It's the only one without an x on it. If you notice, our x's are going to have exponents that, that sort of expire uh, by the end of it. Do you have to have a constant? No, I've talked about that. You don't have to have a constant, but if you do, it should be last. So a sub zero is our constant term. We wouldn't consider it to be a coefficient because it's not a variable term. Variable terms are terms that have variables in it, and we have lots of terms in polynomials, there should be only one constant term. Why? Well, because constants are always like terms. So if you have more than one constant term, you can add it. And you see that a lot in like uh, differential equations, calculus, things like that, where if you have a couple constants, you add them together and you call them a different constant if you don't know exactly what it is. So we should only have one constant term uh, in our polynomial functions like that. Now the degree. What your degree is, our degree is the largest exponent that appears in your polynomial. It should always be the exponent of your leading term because, hey, that's the term with the biggest power. That should be in the front. That's what your degree is. So our, our uh, degree here is n. I'm going to write out right now that it's just the, the largest power that is included in your polynomial. What you don't do, what you don't do is you don't just go add up all your exponents. It's very common for students to do that because you're going to see uh, I'm going to teach you a way to sort of fake distribute to find the degree. It's pretty cool. It's really easy. It's going to save you a ton of time, um, especially when you have these really super factored polynomials and you need to find the end behavior. Well, it's really annoying to have to distribute that. So I'm going to show you a way to do that. Um, but I caution you here. All you're really looking for is Look at your leading term, pick out the biggest exponent that you see up there. It should be in your leading term, otherwise it's out of order, and that is your degree. So I'm going to put n. What I'm going to say is this is just the largest exponent in the polynomial. And again, it tells us a lot about it. We've already talked about that. I'm not going to recap it here. But moving forward, we really need to know what the degree is. Helps us out a lot. So um, just to run down one more time, polynomial means many terms. They're always separated by pluses and minuses. That's what creates terms for us. So you're going to see pluses and minuses. You don't have to have more than one term to define a polynomial, but most of the time they are more than one term. We want the exponents in order, descending, biggest to smallest. That means our first term is always the one with our biggest exponent, called our leading term. It gives us a lot of information. Our degree is the exponent of our leading term. 
The number in front is our leading coefficient, the coefficient of our leading term, and the constant term should be last if we have one. So we're gonna take a look right now. Um, we've, we've really already talked about the second note that I have, that these, these polynomials need to be in order of descending exponents. So we're gonna look through some that are, some that aren't. And then all of the exponents and polynomials have to be positive or zero. Uh, so basically non-negative integers. That means whole numbers. What that means for us is we can't have any fractional exponents, no rational exponents. So there's no square roots in polynomials. Have we dealt with those before? Well, yeah, but this is about polynomials. It's our, our kind of most basic type of function. We start with it here because they're easiest to graph. So that's why we're doing it, um, so that we, we understand the graphs of polynomials and we can make inferences about rationals, we can make inferences about these other things based on that, but we gotta start somewhere. So polynomials do not have fractional exponents. You're like, woohoo, that's <laughs> nice. It is nice, it means we don't have anything really nasty. Our, um, our domain is really easy, it's just all real numbers because there's nothing crazy about polynomials. Uh, we don't have any negative exponents. That means that we don't have like a number with a variable on the denominator. Why? Because that would give us asymptotes. So with polynomials, our domain is all real numbers all the time. And that's fantastic. We're gonna get into end behavior in a little while um, in a different video. But that's, that's really nice to know that, that our polynomials do not give us any domain issues. So you might wanna write that down, that our domain for polynomials is all real numbers. As soon as we start putting radicals, logarithms, and denominators that have variables inside of them, we oftentimes get domain problems. We get these, uh, these issues that say, hey, you can only be positive. Uh, that's logarithms. You can be positive including zero. That's square roots or fourth roots, uh, but not cube roots, right? You can put natives in there. Or you have, hey, you're dividing now by zero. Oh, that's a vertical asymptote. So when we do that, we are going to start getting domain issues, and that, that's most of this class, honestly, is graphing by those domain issues, which is pretty cool. Um, but for here, for polynomials, we don't have any of that stuff. Your domain is all real numbers. Your range is either negative infinity to positive infinity, or infinity, positive infinity to positive infinity, it's, or sorry, zero to positive infinity, unless you start shifting around. Uh, but you, you have this, this range that's very predictable. You have a domain that's very predictable. It's all real numbers. Now let's look at this. Let's see which of these are actually polynomials. We'll identify um, the order, we'll identify the leading term, we'll identify the degree, and then we'll, we'll identify which one of these are not polynomials. So if we look at f of x, this 5x squared plus x to the fourth, well, the first thing we're gonna ask ourselves is, is there anything that's making this not a polynomial? Because if it is, we're really not gonna talk about it yet. So when I look at that, uh, are the exponents all positive? So non-negative, are they all integers? Yeah, two and four look just fine. There's no negative exponents. There's no fractions with variables on the denominator. That would be a negative exponent. There are no ra rational, so fractional exponents. That would be like a radical. So rational exponents give you square roots, cube roots, things like that. So this is fine. The only problem that I'm seeing here is this is not in order. So a lot of times we spend just a second to get our polynomials in order. This is a polynomial from the start, but we just want it to be in order. Now let's talk a little bit about it. Now that this is in order, and what we're talking about is not the coefficients, I could not care less about the coefficients being in order. It doesn't matter. What matters is the exponents. So the four and then the two, I want those exponents to be descending as I go from term to term from left to right. That's what we want. So that's an order that looks really good. Uh, you'll also notice that there's no power three here. So could you write it as a power three? I was talking about this a little while ago, and this is important because when we get to dividing um, rationals or using long division of polynomials, which I'll teach you, is that you need a place for every potential power of x. This is what I was talking about earlier. Is there a power three in here? Yes and no. Do you see it? No. Could you write it? Yes. If you wanted to, you could give it a zero coefficient. 
that is still the same polynomial, 4x to the fourth plus 0x to the third plus 5x squared. That 0, hey, you know about coefficients. You know the coefficients multiply by whatever the variable is that's next. It says no matter what you plug in, that 0, because it's a term, it's separated by pluses and minuses, that 0 would completely annihilate that term. But you could write it. And that's why this is written this way. It's saying, yeah, yeah, we have every power of x uh, going down to none. Sure, but a lot of those coefficients could be zero. That's why that's there. So here you go. Yeah, um, I could write this. Do I need to? In some cases, yes. Here, no, not really. Um, but you just need to be aware that you could do it. So let's erase that. Let's talk about this and say, all right, well, since that's in order, it has a leading term. The leading term here would be 4x to the fourth, the entire term. The leading coefficient is 4 the degree is also 4. That 4, it's the exponent. So our, our exponent of our leading term is called the degree. It tells us a lot about the function. Now, the next term is 5x to, to the second power, or 5x squared, and our coefficient here would be 5. We do not have a constant term. So that's a polynomial. How about the next one? How about g of x? Uh, 3 minus 1 half x. You go, oh, I see a fraction. Fractions are fine as long as they're not exponents. That right there is a polynomial, but it is out of order. So when we write this in order, we need our x terms, no matter what they are, to come in front of our, co our uh, constants. And you'll notice I'm always taking the sign of the term with it. So here we have negative 1 half x plus 3. That's a polynomial. The leading term is negative 1 half x. Our exponents are decreasing. This is x to the first power. This is kind of weird. But could you think of this as x to the 0 power? Yes, x to the 0 power is not 0. It's 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Unless you have 0. Uh, but you wouldn't, we wouldn't consider that because if you plug in 0, we get, um, we'd get a constant there. So for any non-zero. So we'd say, all right, well, if I have x to the 0 power, that being 1, then this would still be 3. And so that right there. Because of that, that case, though, we don't have, um, we wouldn't say that that's a variable term. We'd say, yeah, that's not, there's not really an x there. Uh, we would just consider that to be our constant. So that's an order. We'd say that our exponents are decreasing. There's just none at the end. Our leading term is negative one half x to the first. If you, if you want right now, you should be thinking of the degree. The degree here is one. The leading coefficient is negative one half, and our constant is three. Let's look at a couple other ones. These are often confusing, but I want to make sure that you understand this. Are these polynomials? And the answer is yes, they are. So h of x equals 9 is a polynomial, even though there's one term. If you remember, I told you, you don't have to have more than one term. It's just oftentimes you do. However, you don't have a variable here. So 9 is just a constant term. It is our leading term, but it's not a variable term. So we wouldn't say that 9 is the leading coefficient. But what is our degree? What we would say here is that our degree is zero. For the same reason I showed you earlier, it doesn't really have an x. It doesn't really have a variable. If it did, that exponent would have to be zero. And so we would say that this term, this function, is a constant function. Man, you should see it, right? You should see that's just a horizontal line at nine. That's all that thing is. Our degree is zero. Now, contrast that to the next one, f of x equals 0. You go, well, wait a minute. This, had a, this is actually a constant. The constant is 9. You, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a non-zero constant. Its degree is 0 because, well, if you had x to the 0 power, it'd give you 1, sure, and you'd still get 9 back. In this case, if you have a function that equals 0, you're going to say that that's no degree. Why? Why the difference? Why, does, why is this a degree zero, but this one has no degree? Zero is a very interesting, interesting number. Um, it's this, this multiplicative uh, construct, really, that if you multiply it by anything, it gives you zero. So you take zero by any other number, and you're going to get zero. Well, what that means is that you could put any x over there, and it's not necessarily going to matter what that exponent is, you're going to get zero.
For that reason, whether it's x to the third or x to the 31st, you'd still get zero. You could put any exponent up there and get the same thing. That means that the exponent doesn't matter. That degree could be anything, and therefore we say it has no degree. So when you have a zero function, like h, f of x equals zero in this case, that has no degree because that is has um, that constant right there, that zero constant, no matter what you multiplied it by, as far as a, a, a variable is concerned, it would end up being zero anyhow. And so while we're not multiplying, we can't say it has any specific degree because whatever the degree would be, you'd say it would be zero. So we say it's, there's none. Does it super matter? No, not really. Uh, the big things here, and we're getting into minutia right now, uh, the big things here are that put it in order, make sure you know what a leading term is, make sure you can know how to find the degree, and then um, understand what the constant term is, and that that's at the end. How about the next one? So f of x equals x to the 3 halves, whoa, that's weird. As soon as you say that, as soon as you see a fractional exponent, what that is, that is a square root of x to the third power, that's a radical. There are no radicals in polynomials. So we'd say this is not a polynomial function. We're not gonna be talking about these right now. There is a time and a place, but it's not here. Um, we start getting domain issues out of radicals oftentimes. So we're not talking about that one. This is not a polynomial. How about this? Is this a polynomial? And the answer is no. If you have fractions with variables on the denominator, and you can't get rid of them, well, those fractions with the variable and denominator would end up being negative exponents. You could write this as 1 minus 4x to the negative 1 power. Remember that negative 1 here would become a fraction with x on the denominator to the first power. This right here is not allowed for polynomials. We're not going to be talking about it. We will be talking about irrationals. It's going to give us a vertical asymptote at 0. That's going to be great, but it's not here. So polynomial, sure. Positive exponents, no problem. Polynomial here, sure, positive exponents that are not fractions. Here, positive exponents, yeah, zero. Uh, Non-negative means including zero, positive and zero. So yeah, here, uh, it's a weird one. We say it has no degree, um, it's a zero function. Uh, how about x to the 3 halves? Positive, yes, but fractions are not allowed for polynomials. Here, no, negative exponents not allowed for polynomials. How about the last one? Uh, is it a polynomial? Polynomials have only to do with the the way that our term is structured and the type of exponent we have. So our exponent is 4, 2, and then a constant. Those are not negative exponents, and they're also not fractional exponents. So even though it might look a little bit weird with pi, you can minus pi x squared, that's crazy, this is still a polynomial. Hmm. Is it in order? Yes, the exponents 4 and then 2 and then your constant are in order. That's fine. So right now, identify your leading term in your head. You should be thinking, my leading term is 9, x to the 4th. No problem. Our leading coefficient is 9 and our degree is 4. That degree 4 is going to tell us that this polynomial is even. It's an even-based polynomial. That end behavior is given by your leading term and your degree. The next term is negative. We include with a sign pi x squared where our, our coefficient for that term is negative pi. It's kind of awkward, but that's okay. And our constant term is one half. So it's in order, it's a polynomial. We have identified the leading term and the degree. And that's great. That's really all we want to be able to do. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a couple more on the board that I really want to show you some, um, some intricacies with. Okay, so I have put up four more examples talking about whether or not these are polynomials uh, because this can be a little bit confusing for some students. They don't quite grasp uh, what's going on here, especially with the fractions and the radicals and how to find a leading term without actually distributing it. That's the cool part. So let's look at this g of x right here. Is that a polynomial? No, it, no it's not. It's not going to be one, but you need to do something before you make that determination. So how we determine whether or not we have a polynomial is Take and see if you can divide it and see what happens here. Now, from its structure just at the beginning, we'd say, no, this is actually a rational function. Rational is this idea of ratio, fraction, where you have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. However, sometimes we can cheat the system if we divide it. And so we can, we can find a domain and then divide the functions and treat it like a polynomial except for the case of, of missing some points in the domain. 
We call those things holes. So we'll talk about holes and asymptotes. A hole is a removable discontinuity. It means basically you're missing a point. So why is that not a polynomial? Because it doesn't have any negative uh, exponents right now. That's positive, that's positive. However, if you were to divide this and simplify it, Both of these denominators you can move as x to the negative 2 power and 5x to the negative 4 power. So I say it this way, if you have any, any fractions where you have variables on the denominator and you cannot simplify it completely away, that thing right, actually just from the start, that's not a polynomial. If you can simplify it, you can treat it sort of like a polynomial. We call it a removable discontinuity, a whole, I'll show you that later. Uh, but this would not be a polynomial. This is a rational function. Now the next one, think of what I just told you. If it's a fraction where you have variables on the denominator, that is when you run into the, I am a rational, I'm not a polynomial. This is a polynomial. There's no variables on the denominator. And if you were to simplify this, if you write this as you could think of this as three sevenths x squared minus one seventh. Hey, it's in order. Our exponent is positive and that's a constant. My leading term is 3 sevenths x squared. My leading coefficient is 3 sevenths. My degree is 2 and my constant is negative 1 seventh. That's certainly a polynomial. You just can't make the jump until you really look at your denominator. If you have variables down there, no, that's rational. If you don't, yes, that is a polynomial and you can write it as a polynomial with these addition or subtraction of terms in order. That's what we're looking for. The last one, um, right off the, I mean, you can look and say, yeah, man, you got square roots everywhere, and that's, that's not a polynomial, and you'd be right. However, just consider for a second, if you were to distribute it, perhaps those square roots go away. Perhaps you simplify them. Now, I will tell you something that's very dangerous. If you, if you uh, distribute, and somehow it gets rid of your square roots, it gets rid of your fraction, does something where it changes the look of it, you need to have found your domain first because in doing this, it can make it appear that your domain changes. Your domain from the original function will not change for the better. <laughs> you can only make it worse. Um, it's not gonna change for the better. So if you start distributing this and you go, oh, my domain's all real numbers now, but it wasn't before, uh, but it is now, that's a problem. So from the beginning, we'd have this thing in our head like, wait a minute, square roots have to be positive, zero or positive. So um, positive numbers. If I start distributing this, 2 square root x times square root of x is just 2x. That makes it look like this part of your function's domain problem is gone. Now you get all real numbers. That cannot happen. And so from that idea, from the beginning, say this is not a polynomial. It already has domain issues. And we know polyno polynomials have no domain issues. You can plug in anything to a polynomial because they don't have rational exponents. This is x to the one-half power. That's already a rational exponent. You can't have that for polynomials. Uh, so right there, you'd say, yeah, that's not a polynomial. That, that's a radical expression, actually. And uh, our domain for polynomials has to be all real numbers all the time. However, what I just said was sometimes you can get a better look if you, if you distribute and you can sort of treat it like a polynomial sometimes. So it is worthwhile to understand that this is not a polynomial. We distributed from the beginning. We knew our domain wasn't all real numbers. We know our domain had some radicals in it. We know our domain had fractional exponents. that are not integers. Integers are whole, basically whole numbers here. Non-negative integers are positive whole numbers in zero. Um, even if we distribute it, though, we still have that square root of x. So we're, we're kind of done smoked on that one. Now, the last example I want to talk to you about, I'm going to teach you right here. It's the, probably the most important one for you to pay attention to because this is going to really save you a lot of time later. Oftentimes, we get polynomials that are factored. Or you create a factored type of polynomial, but you still need to figure out the end behavior. Why? Well, you don't want to know what this, this polynomial looks like, whether it's going like this or like this or like this or my favorite dance moves. 
What? Um, so you're going to want that one's really dorky. I'm sorry. You're going to want to know what the leading term is. The leading term gives you the degree. It will give you end behavior. It'll give you the maximum number of turning points that you have. But it is a pain to have to distribute this. Let me pause right here for a second. Sometimes you're going to have to distribute this if you are going to start on the right hand side and work your way left. So distribute your x, well distribute this because it has x minus x minus one times x minus one. Then you distribute this through your uh, product. Then you distribute this term through the rest of them or this factor through the rest of them. Don't start this way. It's very confusing. That's just my opinion. Now, can we find the leading term without distribution? Yes, I call it fake distribution. I don't know um, what if there's a, if there is a real. I've never seen anybody else do this. But here's the way that you would do it. Show where your products are. So for instance, you have a product here, here, here. Take the largest power of your variable that you would get if you were to distribute every factor. I'm going to say that again. Look at all of your factors. There's one, two, three, and four. Take the largest power that you would get if you were to distribute it. Honestly, all you got to do, because distribution would take your this term times another term twice, take your exponent, multiply it by your largest term. It should be in order, right? Because these are polynomials. Take it and distribute that. So take it, this is one, and distribute that. So take for every factor the largest power that you would get. Here, this is just two. Here, this is x cubed. For this factor, you get, let's see, x squared, 2 times 1 is 2, that's x squared. Here's x to the first, 1 times 2 is 2, that's another x squared. Can you see it if you were to factor, or if you were to distribute this? You have x minus 1 times x minus 1. The largest power you get is x squared. Here you'd have x squared, oh, there's, there's only one of those, so you'd have x squared, that's your largest power. Here, x cubed, there's nothing to multiply that by as far as changing the exponent. If you take every factor and do what I've done, take the largest power you would get by distribution and multiply it, this is going to give you your leading term. Just remember, when you're multiplying these, um, these variables that have exponents, you add your exponents. So we'd have two. We'd have, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. 2x to the 7th is your leading term. Your degree is 7. Your leading coefficient is 2. Your end behavior is a positive, because, hey, that's a positive number. Odd. We haven't got to end behavior. I know this, but I'm prefacing where we're going, so you, it makes sense when we get there. Your positive and odd. It's going to look like this. Your function is going to look like this. It's going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's not going to be like this. That would be a positive even. This would be a negative odd, negative leading term, and odd uh, degree. And this would be a negative even, negative leading term, and then an even degree. So this is a positive odd. We know for sure that this polynomial, if you were to distribute it and you were to graph it, it's going to have an end behavior that looks like this. Start down there, go to there. That's pretty neat. So that's the way that this fake distribution sort of works. Um, if this had been, let's change it one time. If this had been like a power three, this would be a six, you'd multiply. Two times three, that would give you six, and you would add them up. So you'd get three, nine, 10, 11. That would be to the 11th power. So anyhow, um, that's gonna come in really handy. I'm gonna refresh your memory when we get more into um, like multiplicity and finding out uh, sketching of these polynomials, but that, that's practically what you need to know right now. Polynomials are these many terms added and subtracted. You want them in order. You want to be able to find your leading term, because it's super important, your degree, and your constant. Uh, the only thing we really have to focus on is that all of your exponents for polynomials have to be non-negative integers, so that's zero and positive numbers and whole numbers. If not, you don't have a polynomial. Polynomials domain is all real numbers, means you have zero issues because there's nothing to create issues in a polynomial. That also means that it's going to be this smooth, continuous curve with no cusps, uh, those are short points, no gaps, no holes, and no asymptotes. That's super convenient. And lastly, you want these things in order all the time. Hope that makes sense. That's just a little refresher, kind of a bigger refresher than I thought. And uh, we'll get on into power functions next time.